timber. From the attacks that I showed previously, you can have an estimation of the attack time, duration of each attack time, also attack slope. Uh, also, simply the zero crossing rate, so how many times the curve change sign. Uh, it's an indicator of the noisiness, if you look at the zero crossing rate from the waveform. And you can have a rate per second, per sample, and so on. The role of uh, description of the spectral uh, distribution. So if you take the 80% of the energy in the low register and the 15 remaining percent, for instance, in the high energy, the question is, at which frequency do we have this separation? For instance, here at this particular frequency. And the higher this border means that you will have more energy in the higher frequencies. And in the reverse, you can fix the cutoff frequency and look simply at the ratio of energy be below and over this cutoff. At the end of the tutorial, I will use this mere brightness as an example of how to write your own function. So for timber to go on MFCC, male frequency capstroke coefficient is related to capstrum. We remember it was the FFT of FFT with absolute logarithm. For MFCC, again, spectrogram, also logarithm. Decomposition into male bands to have uh, auditory modeling. And instead of uh, Fourier transform, Fourier transform I used to see if there is harmonicities in the FFT. No, we just want to have a description of the spectral shape. Usually we use discrete cosine transform because it gives a compact description of this spectral shape. So now we have this MFCC. Roughness, it's uh, sensory dissonance, so it means especially when you have, for instance, two sinusoids, if they have very close frequency, you have a perception of beatings that will uh, erode some roughness perception. And here is the curve proposed by Arcetaris, showing for each possible interval between the, these two peaks, two uh, sinusoids, what will be the perception of roughness. So now if you have a particular spectrogram, spectrum, we can take all the peaks and sum all these pairs of sinusoids and have an idea of the global uh, dissonance. Another timbral description, the irregularity. It's quite used more for when you have a, a series of harmonics for one signal, one note of one instrument then the irregularity will show the viability of the amplitude of the successive harmonics. Okay, now pitch extraction. There are different techniques possible. Either autocorrelation of after filter bank, that's the one used by default, uh, or you can compute a spectrum, autocorrelation of the spectrum to see the periodicities in the FFT or the capstrum and so on. And you can combine if you like multiply the results. The approach used by default that we found working quite well in our examples is the Tolon and Karyalainen approach. So using filter bank with the two channels as I showed previously and with autocorrelation enhanced and generalized autocorrelation. In the end you have this peak peaking. Again you can specify maximum number of pitch you accept and if you accept only one so it means you you want to see some monodic pitch uh, estimation and specify the range of frequencies you accept for the pitch. And then the contrast parameter for the peak peaking. And this the resolution factor. So you say that you don't want to have peaks that are closer than one semitone. One example here. So we compute the autocorrelation frame by frame not very clear here, but then we remove the um, harmonics using the enhanced autocorrelation. Actually, if we zoom here, we will see clearly like a piano roll. And then with the mere pitch, it will return these actual uh, detected frequencies. So you can see like this. 
and the colors indicate actually the ordering of the peaks with respect to the energy of each peak, from the strongest uh, pitch to the weakest. And you can play the result, and it will play like this. So it's uh, with sinusoid for each frame. So you can listen if by yourself if you see the result is uh, close to the original or what you perceive yourself. Then tonality. So you can compute the chromagram, so the distribution of energy along the different pitches. So first, you compute the spectrum in decibel. Take, the, for instance, the 20 highest decibel, a range of frequencies. Then you will redistribute this spectrum along pitches. You see here the different pitches. Not all are indicated here. And then you can wrap it to have just the distribution along the different pitch classes. So you have these 12 different pitch classes, and you see the distribution of energy along these. Then you can specify which resolution you, you want to, to use, so either 12 by default or other possible uh, resolution, such as uh, 36, so you have uh, three classes for each possible uh, uh, traditional semitone. S um, it, it's quite good usually to, if, uh, for instance, you try to have tonal analysis with uh, uh, example where the, it's not tuned uh, exactly as uh, as was uh, predicted in the model, <coughs> then you can have estimation of the key it's itself. So you start from the chromogram. So again, it was a distribution of energy along the pitches. And now there are research that propose profiles that will be related to each different possible tonality. So you will have one profile showing the distribution of pitch for C major, one profile for C sharp major, same for C minor, C sharp minor, and so on. And now we want to know whether this chromogram is re related to one of those uh, key. And for that, uh, we can perform a cross correlation. And then we can display all the results in two curves, the blue curve for all the major key candidates and the red one for all the minor key candidates. So this is a key strength curve. And you can see here, so the, in the x-axis are the different key. And then if you take the highest uh, peak here, it will be considered as the best candidate for key estimation. Again, you can, if you like, find several possible keys or several candidates. <coughs> um, so here again, you can uh, have several outputs. If you ask for the th these three outputs, the first one will be the key. So for a frame decomposed uh, key estimation, you will see the evolution of the key. For instance, here, first A sharp minor, then D sharp major, and so on. The second output will be the clarity of the key. So it's the result of this uh, cross correlation that we computed for the, the best cross correlation. So we see at some region there are some more ambiguity for the estimation of the key. Then the third output is uh, th that key strength, so the, um, the score for each possible uh, key candidate for major and minor. Okay. So this is the difference between the two amplitude. And also it's possible, instead of computing the key strength, we can project the chromogram into a self-organizing map if you have an unsupervised learning of this map with this chromogram, what you obtain, this key uh, disposition, is very close to what is proposed uh, traditionally in musicology. What this is interesting. So you have the different uh, relative keys and fifths and uh, intervals, fifths, fourths, and so on. And we see the projection of the given signal and see that it's quite centered in this region. And then if you do frame by frame analysis, you will see evolution, a movie showing the evolution of this projection.